Gareth Southgate side getting the job done. Late goals from Sterling and Kane guarantee them a place in the last eight. We'll get the reaction from the boys in the studio in a moment, but let's head to Wembley. Alexis, how was it for you? Oh my goodness, Dan, that was an absolutely amazing experience. It definitely tops the experience of England-Scotland because the England-Germany rivalry is just one that's clearly like no other. And 55 years of holding that grudge and that heartbreak of not being able to beat Germany in a knockout stages of any major competition is now to an end. And there's a bunch of police still around here because even though it's three hours after the match ended, there's still a number of England fans just still trying to soak in the atmosphere fair soaking the moment because like I said even though a bunch of them are still way young to the, younger than 55 so they probably wouldn't <laughs> have remembered that last time but they're still trying to soak it in because I'm sure their grandfathers their fathers if you, I don't know if you hear behind me but they've started singing it's coming home and they can see us now because that's exactly what everyone's been chanting here that it's coming home you did mention it probably wasn't the most exciting of games and you know what the fans it was 40,000 in there but it might as well have been the 90 plus thousand capacity because the 12th man came in super strong today i know in the past england fans have been criticized for i suppose giving up too early and letting their pessimism sink in and kind of turning on the players this time they kept willing them on they kept letting their frustrations know keep saying pass 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 like to keep pressing germany even when it looked a bit dull raheem sterling they kept yelling at him telling him just shoot stop trying to walk in the ball just shoot and eventually that obviously paid off when he did score that goal i I made sure to sit near the England fans and there was a guy who was three rows up from me and he just threw himself and I was the one that broke his fall. He was shirtless. It hurts a little, but in the end, it was all worth it because you know what? As they're singing here, it might as well be coming home. Wow, wow, well, Alexis, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> just to confirm we that. We got a little bit more than we thought. Just to confirm, <laughs> <laughs> just confirm that gentleman and was not. The only the last 16. It uh, was not Stephen Nicol. Stevie, when we take, took a look at the starting 11, uh, England fans generally were pessimistic given the defensive setup. You had pretty much eight defensive players with just that Saka, Sterling, Kane trio up front. Did this work for Southgate or did he get lucky? Well, it worked because they won the game. So you can't say anything else. You know, you can, you can complain about how they go about winning the game, but you can't complain that they won the game. You know, nobody wants to see their team playing open attack football and getting beaten. Right. Because then you'll just, you'll get as much criticism for being too open. So they're not great to watch. Uh, when you play with two defensive midfielders, the way they do with, with Rice and Phillips, then don't expect that the ball's going to be getting forward in any sort of a quick fashion. It's going to be careful, it's going to be calculated. And when you're careful and calculated, then it makes it easier for the opposition to defend against you. So they won the game, they're pragmatic, yes. There's no way they're going to go open up, change the team and start going at teams. Just out of interest, was Jack Grealish coming on in the 20th minute part, uh, 20 minutes ago part of the game plan? Keep it tight for nil-nil, then put Grealish on just to add a little bit of something different? Listen, when you need something and you've got the quality of a Grealish, then it makes sense to bring him on. Right. It's clearly it was going to be him. The fans were screaming for him. They brought him on before and he's, he's changed the tempo of the game for England. So it was always going to be a good option if needed. Two nicely worked goals that made the difference. Yeah, exactly. Two shots on target because, pretty much, wasn't it, for England? Well, Two goals. I have to say that it could have gone either way because... Um, I wasn't very good in math at school, but I, <laughs> it was easy to count it. Uh, to count that the fact that we had three big chances for Germany, three big chances for England, and uh, they were more accurate, pragmatic in, yes. in a way, and that's that makes difference. And uh, uh, somebody like Grealish knows how to serve his uh, strikers, and 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 did it again today. Well, it's um, again, it wasn't perfect, but as Stevie said, as long as you win. We have all excuses in the world and you carry on and that's it. Yeah. We, uh, the Germans go back home and football comes on. About taking chances, wasn't it? You think of that opportunity that Werner had. Yeah. Good save from Pickford, maybe should have lifted it over him. Havertz with a chance, obviously ball tipped over. But the defining moment, I thought, in the game was Thomas Muller threw one-on-one, puts it wide. Uh, I, when, when the score was still 1-0. And, and that's the amazing thing for me. And, and listen, it, it is tough to, to criticise guys Southgate and England when you go through. You you do get the better of Germany. But at the same time, 
I, I continue to be a little bit critical of England's own kind of self-doubt or self-negativity in, in, in many respects. I was critical of, of their approach in the 2018 World Cup, and I think that, that would, bringing Grealish on with 20 minutes ago was something that Gareth Southgate thought through and planned to do from, from, from the get-go. Maybe goals in the game would have changed that. But as much as we're celebrating England's win against Germany, this is not a good German side. Germany conceded six against Spain. Not bad, Shane. Germ hold on. No, the, no, hold I mean, on, hold on. The, Germany conceded six against the players, Spain. Look at those players. In, it's Germany, not bad. Germany lost to North Macedonia. Germany was six minutes away from going out of this competition. Yet what you do is your game plan is to sit tight for 70 minutes and then try to win the last 20 when you're at home and you're one of the favourites in this competition. That, that's m my point here is if that's your tactic against Belgium. If that's your tactic against Italy, maybe we have a different conversation around that tactic and, and, and the need for it. But to use that from the get-go, and I think that was Gareth Southgate's plan from the, from the drawing board. Sit tight, hope right. for nil-nil, and get Grealish or somebody on to, to change it against... A, this is a, there's no other way to put it. This yep. is a very poor gym. Shaka, the, the, the last winner of that competition, Portugal finished third in the, in the, in the group stages. Yeah. Uh, haven't been fantastic all the, the tournament long in 2016 and won against France with, mm -hmm. let's say, luck, but pr pragmatism and, uh, and, and a thought, defensive thought. This, this tournament, they changed their mind, tried to be more offensive, bye-bye. You know, so what is the reality about our football and the, the modern football? What do you have to do to make sure you're going to win the tournament? Do you have to be, I would say, going forward, yeah, let's go so for it? Yeah. Or, or, I don't know, there is no rule to be a winner. I, look, I'm, 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 not, I'm not saying that there's a rule. Or you, or all I'm saying is, if you're the better team, I expect you to play the better football. Yeah, I don't that, expect you to be negative from... from they've been opinion. better than Germany in a way that they, they didn't concede any goal and they, they won 2 nils. Because, be, because of, of Havertz and Werner and Muller, the, the poor misses. All, uh, all I'm saying... That's part of football. Or, or, which is fine. If that's what you're relying on, if you're relying on a poor team to have a poor game despite no. dominating, then fair enough. I, 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 I just I, don't no, see how I, that, how I, that I, makes I sense. I hear you, and I'm, I, would, I would say that I try to be, you know, to, to go the other way just to explain that is, there is no, in fact, real explanations and real analysis about what we saw today. I, I agree with you. I think it's not enough from England, and it's not enough for most country who wants to win a, a tournament and, uh, and, and say we are the favourites and we want to show that we are the favourites. And I really agree with you. Germany is not the best team in the world anymore and far from there. But I don't know what's it going to do the next turn, the next round, uh, how it's going to work. But that's the way football in England uh, or Gareth Southgate wants to play his football. And as long as he wins, nobody can argue with him. When he wins, going to lose. If he loses, we're going to say, well, of course. You didn't do what you had to do. It's true. With the talent that you have for, in, uh, forward, I think it should be otherwise. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.